Alright, hello, and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over how to create an animated extrusion in Maya. Uh, you may have seen whoops, the similar thing here on Video Copilot, and this is the exact same thing I'm showing you how to do, except instead of in 3D Max, I'm going to show you how to do it in Maya. <clears throat> now, I did this tutorial, tutorial a while back and I took it off my site um, when I changed my site, but I was asked to bring it back up, and the reason I took it off is because I was never really satisfied with the way in which I created the extrusion and I have to admit I'm still not. I am going to be showing you another way that introduces a couple new concepts but really I'm not really happy with the way this turns out. There's probably there must be, that's why I keep on thinking, there must be a better way to do this however I cannot find it anywhere. Um, and the ways I'm showing you do work however they're um, somewhat time consuming so let's get straight to work. First I want to show you um, the problems that are happening um, when doing this in Maya. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to a top view real quick and create a circle. And just to cre quickly create a bunch of different size circles, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Control D on the keyboard, move it off to the side, scale it down, and then instead of doing Control D to do another key, um, duplicate, I'm going to do a Shift D. And that is going to duplicate it with the transform. And what that's going to do is also move this one to the left and scale it down. So you can see it got smaller. I'm just going to move this into place, and I'm just going to keep on shift Ding until I get a bunch of these different size circles. And that'll work for right now. Then I'm going to select them all, hit Control G on the keyboard, and if I bring up my outliner, you can see we now have the group containing our NURB circles. And we can just rename this group to Circles. And I'm just going to move this out of the way for right now. Now if we go to a side view, select our EP curve tool, you can do it in, you can create them in the curves shelf um, tab, or go to create EP curve tool. So I'll do that, I'm going to hold down X to snap to the grid, and I'm going to snap to the center point. You don't have to do this, but I always like to start there. And I'm just going to create a wavy curve, and I'll hit enter to end that. Then what I'm going to do is select my circles group, shift or shift or control select the curve one, and then I'm going to go up to surfaces, extrude, and um, if you haven't done this or if you have changed the settings within extrude, just go to edit, reset settings, and get to this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to choose partial, and what this is going to do is give us an extra option that allows us to extrude these. So I'll select that, and we'll change this to um, path direction. So if I hit 5 on the keyboard you can see we have our extruded shapes. And you can see that they're flattened but when we change this next option that will kind of be worked out. So I'll change the rotation option within the extrude 6 input to, and make sure you have all these selected, if you only have one selected it's only going to affect one of them. So we're going to change this to 1000. And you can see, whoa, that's kind of weird. Um, but for the exa this example it will still work. So whatever we have these randomly extruded and rotated and um, revolved um, cylinders in a way, whatever, vines. And now we want to extrude them. Now here is where the problem starts. We're going to have to take a look at just one of these at a time because you have to set some stuff up to make them all work at the same time. So we'll just hide these and I'm going to do that by creating a new layer, right clicking and saying add the selected to, the ob um, to this layer and then I'm going to turn off the visibility. So here we have our one um, our one vine. And I'm going to highlight this, bring up the inputs, and I'm going to choose subcurve 10, which is the second subcurve. The numbers might be different depending on what curve you have selected, but it's the second one. So I'll choose this, and I'll scroll down. And you can see we have a minimum value and a maximum value. I'm going to select the maximum value, and I am going to turn it down. And that is how you change the extrusion. However, let me change the rotation back to zero real quick, just so you can see. When the rotation is at zero and we change the change the extrusion value, you can see, and I'm just doing this by selecting the name and middle clicking and dragging, you can see that we do get almost the type of extrusion we're looking for. However, when we add the rotation, because the rotation is staying constant while the 
um, extrusion is changing, we get a sort of slinky um, spring-like effect. And that is obviously not what we want. Well, it might be, but it's not what we're going for in this project. And that's where the problems start. So we have to find a way around this. And the first way I'm going to be showing you, and I'll just start a new scene, is using a Mel script that you can get off the internet. If you go to highend3d.com, um, I'll be posting a link to this exact page on the site, or um, on the bottom of this page. Um, you will have to create a username and log in. But you can download this Mel script that is called Extrude Length Along Curve. And what this does is takes a, um, a curve that's been extruded, and when you run the Mel script, it gives you an extra option that allows you to change the extrusion length. Uh, to use this, just download it, and um, you can open it up into a text editor, whatever. Copy that, and then open up your script editor, which is this button down here, and paste it into this lower section. Um, if you want it to work where you can put it into a um, shelf button, what you can do is I would go to the bottom and add this one line, just extrude L, which will run the script. Then highlight all of it, and middle click and drag it into your shelf. Um, and you can create your own custom pictures, uh, name it, whatever. And then you can just select those buttons and it will run the script. Um, you can also just type in extrude L down here like this. Oops. And hit enter and when a selected extrude is when an, um, an extrusion is selected, um, the script will work and it will work the same as selecting the button. So that's that. So let's get started with that method. Now, this is the same method I showed in the old tutorial. And if you've seen that before, um, this is going to be a little bit different because I found a way that works a little bit better. Um, bef one thing you should know is that when you cr um, run the script, if your circle, let's say, was over here and the extrusion was set, when you ran the script, the extrusion would be moved back to the origin. And that kind of created some problems because you'd have to go through and manually move them back into place. To fix that, what we're going to do is just create circles all right at the origin. So what I'm going to do is just change to the scale tool and hit control D, scale it down um, as much as you want, and then I'm going to hit shift D a couple times. And we get this um, a couple of scaled down circles. So we have this group, and we can select these again, hit control G, change the group name to circles, and that's that. Then once again we're going to go to our side view, create a random wavy curve, however you want. Select it, hit 3 on the keyboard just to smooth it out. Um, you can see by going through 1, 2, and let me go closer, 1, 2, and 3, it gets smoother and smoother. And then we can select our circles, control select our curve, and using the same options as before, I'm going to hit extrude. And you can see right here that all of our extrusions are right inside of each other. Hit the 5 on the keyboard. You can see we have some weird things going on here, but that will all be fixed when we add the rest of the stuff. So now what we want to do is go through these newly created surfaces and one by one run the script on them. So what we can do is just select the extrusion, come down here, type extrude L, Make sure it's, it, this is case sensitive, so make sure you type extrude all lowercase and a capital L, and hit enter on the keyboard. Now this cannot be found because I have not yet run the script, so I'll just choose which one of these it is. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to say. Let me delete all of these real quick. Circles, control select, when you are in your surface options, when you want to run the script, partial cannot be selected. You don't want those two extra subcurves. So we're going to change the curve range to complete. And that's why I was having those problems just now. So once again, we'll extrude. We get our extrusions. Select the first one. Type extrude L. It's already here. Hit enter. And it has now run the script. What we can do is now just go down this list and do it for each one. Now instead of having to type extrude L every time, 
If you press the up arrow on the keyboard, it will show the last run um, command. And if you go down, it will go through the list. So you can go up and down. Um, but because it's the only one I've used so far, it's the only one here. So I can just hit up, hit enter, and go on to the next one. Click it, hit up, enter. Click it, hit up, enter. Click. And I don't know if I said this before, but it, this can only be run on one extrusion at a time, which is why we have to do it like that. Okay, so now that we've run the script on each of them, if I just select one of these randomly, and I go into the extrude one input, you can see we now have an extra option called extrude length. So, and that's what, exactly what we want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these into the positions I want. So before I do that, I'll just select all. Whoops, let me bring this back in so you can see it. Select all the surfaces and go into the extrude and change our rotation to 1,000. And right away. You can see that we have some more divisions, but all of our extrusions are right on top of each other. Now because these are still connected to the original circles that were used to make the extrusions, we can just move those original circles. So to do that, just to make it a little bit easier to see, first I'm going to turn off this um, curve selection just so when I can highlight all these and it won't select that original curve. Then I'm going to create a new layer right click and add selected objects and then I can turn off the visibility and now we don't see any of our extrusions but we can see our original curves and let's also hide this curve right here turn this back on because that might get in the way now we can go back to our top view and just select the curves that we want and place them in whatever order or whatever random pattern you would like. And you can always come back and change this when you're done and it'll still um, all work. So here's a little random whatever pattern. And there we go. So now let's turn back on the visibility and if we go to our perspective view you can see we have our extrusion. And they're wrapping around and whatever. And it looks pretty good. So now if we select all of these, let's once again turn off the curve so we don't select that center curve. Scroll down to our extrusion and down to extrude length. We'll select the title and we can middle click and drag. And you can see if we hold down control so we can go slower, we're getting a nice, perfect extrusion exactly how we want. So that is solution number one. And yes, it does work. However, you might not want to use um, an external mail script, and I don't really know why, um, but if you don't, I will now show you another way to do it. And we can just use this, um, these circles and the same stuff uh, that we have right here. Now this way is not going to use any external um, scripts, nothing you have to, it's just going to use the built-in functionality of my however. This is more time consuming, especially if you want to set it up um, so you can adjust all the extrusions at once. So what we're going to do is select our circles, control select our curve, we're going to go up to surfaces, extrude, um, and for this first step it doesn't matter if you have partial or complete um, because um, we're not going to be changing the extrusion of these curves. So we can keep all of these the same and I'll hit extrude and let's now set our desired rotation. So, as before, I'll set this to 1000. And there we have our curves, or our uh, extrusions. Now, we have a little bit of uh, intersecting here. Um, so if you didn't like it, you could move, it, move everything around, move your circles around so you don't get that. However, for demonstration purposes, um, this will be fine. So now what we're going to do is use these extrusions to give us new curves um, and you'll see why at the end. So what I'm going to do is just select each of these one at a time, right click it and choose um, isoparm and this um, the object will turn this uh, bluish color. We're just going to select any one of the um, isoparms around the um, length of the extrusion, so not one of these. Make sure you select the uh, longer ones. 
Then we're going to go in the Surfaces menu set, we're going to go to Edit Curves, 